No. Announcement. Announcement. Oh, announcement. Hi, everyone. Miss me? <laughs> okay, so this is going to be a really, really important and monumental moment here at tomorrow conference. So we ask all of you to please come on in from the exhibit. If you guys are upstairs, please come on in and have your phones ready. Um, I hope that you really enjoy it and you know this is going to be a really big highlight for you as it is for us. Ten. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Flag has now been planted on the moon. And we have no reason to doubt it. I would not be at all surprised to be hearing a, hu a human voice from outer space. about falling these days, but you have to fall to be able to rise again. Welcome to the future. Welcome to tomorrow. Growing up in America, we learned that Neil Armstrong was not only the first man to fly into space to land onto the moon, but he is also one of the few people that had really set the tone. And as he landed on the moon, he said, that's one small step for man, one giant step for mankind. So each and every single one of us here are astronauts that are building a better tomorrow where all of us can be in space. We are in space. And it is my absolute honor to introduce to you the organizers um, behind all of this. Joining with us on stage is Zoran, our program director, and we have Mina, our director of partnerships. Hi everyone again and welcome to Belgrade. Welcome to first tomorrow conference. You know, uh, our team sat one day and we had a silly idea to organize not only the first, but the biggest crypto, NFT and metaverse conference in Europe. For the beginning, we didn't have a clue what we were doing. But guess what? Here we are and I guess we made it, so thank you. Thank every one of you, every attendee, every speaker, every sponsor, partner, and media partner for trusting us, for giving us the support we needed, and also for being here so we can have a full main stage. I can also see a lot of people standing behind, sorry for that. This is the first tomorrow conference, but now we can say 100% sure we can make this a tradition. So I hope you will all be here again next year, but 
as you are here now, I will let Zoran, our program director, uh, give you more of what we are experiencing today and in the next few days. So that's all from me. Thank you again. Thank you, Mina, for such a lovely introduction. Um, over the course of the next three days, um, you'll be able to attend over 50 keynote speeches, uh, seven panel discussions right here on the main stage, and also uh, we will have other uh, panels, um, actually other presentations on the other two stages. So um, I'm just going to say that I'm very happy to be a part of this, and I would also love to thank you uh, for coming here, for coming to Belgrade, making this event really an amazing thing. And um, without further ado, uh, we will uh, do our best to make you feel very pleasant and enjoy tomorrow and have fun. We have already started with the program, so we will continue uh, our next panel discussion we have one uh, giant news. This is the second time in the world, but first time in Europe. So something uh, that you have uh, a premier uh, time to see. So our next panel discussion will be held in the metaverse. So I will call our friend Vitomir Yevremovic from the All Art and Salty crew to join us. He will be the host, the moderator of the panel, and he will introduce our panelists. So enjoy the metaverse and enjoy the rest of the conference and see you later. Vite Maestro Vici Siaino. Hi everyone. Hi. Um, we're gonna now set up, I'm gonna enter the, the metaverse. Uh, by the way, uh, my name is uh, Vito Mirevremovic, but you can call me Vito. Uh, it's shorter, easier to remember. Um, I come from all our protocol, as you can see on my T-shirt. Uh, we also run uh, SolSea NFT Marketplace on Solana. And today uh, I will be hosting a panel in All Art Metaverse. And I will be speaking to other panelists uh, that are joining me uh, in virtual reality. Uh, what is interesting is that these guys uh, actually have their own NFT collections. So the topic of today will be uh, NFTs, collections in NFTs, launching your own NFT collection, and the whole panel will happen in the metaverse. So um, give me a few moments to set this up. Hi guys. Hey. Hi Vito. Hi. <clears throat> so the audience is. Is the audience here? Yes. Hello. <clears throat> so, hello. So, um, I'm very happy to welcome all the participants of the panel. Uh, we have um, uh, Leo, Tomo, and Chris. Uh, they come from different uh, collections. <laughs> I presume that they can actually see you. 
It's quite strange for me, by the way, because I my voice is like uh, 30 seconds late. Uh, so, not 30, five seconds. Okay, so we will start. Um, uh, Chris from uh, Lux Collection. Uh, that was an interesting project. Uh, he will talk more about this. Uh, Miners of Mars uh, collection recently launched on uh, Solana Met uh, on Solana NFT. Uh, ah, it's very difficult for me to concentrate. Okay, let's try this. Omo is from Miners of Mars. Uh, that's an NFT collection that was launched recently on Solana blockchain. Uh, Lux and Chris have their own metaverse. We will talk about that too. And Leo, Leo is coming from also a special collection, uh, artistic kind of collection, Stonehead. So guys, welcome to the panel. Um, audience is here, they are listening to us. So let's start with a very basic question. Um, introduction of the collections. Tell us a bit about your projects and what we are doing for it. What is on the roadmap? Quickly. <laughs> okay, sure. Chris, please. Yeah, so th thank you first of all to having having us here. But uh, in general, we we launched already back in November, so we, we have had uh, been um, been around for a while. And then our second collection, which was the real estate collection, did launch in February fourth. Uh, so we have been very much deep into developing right now. Um, newly released an alpha for both uh, Mac and also for PC, as well as we are working on the VR. So yeah, and, and what's ahead not right now is that we, we are planning a, a PFP uh, avatar collection that will be accessible in the platform. Uh, where we have hired some really great top artists that we will reveal soon. But in general, I would say like we've been working very hard on the platform, trying to uh, continually release iteration, taking feedback from the community. Thanks. Uh, Tomo, tell us about Miners of Mars. Uh, yeah, Miners of Mars is a collection that is uh, hand-drawn on paper by Marvel artists. And, uh, our idea is to create a storyline that follows tokenomics and both the uh, gaming part of the of the collection itself. So we, for example, have uh, our miners that go into the mine and they dig deep into the mine and they uh, have different safety hazards there coming and connected to the story in the same time with the, the collection itself. So, uh, for example, the miner, we have a Mars plate, we have the, we have the safety suits and uh, we have different kinds of safety reducing hazards that are connected to the tokenomics, but in the same time, it's uh, story-wise, it's connected to the comic book that we are writing. So, in short, that's it. <laughs> um, Leo, before you start, uh, can you lower the volume of your headset a bit? Let me check one second. Just lower it. There are two buttons there. I think your voice is picking up. Yeah, oh, there's... It, it's much better, I guess. Okay, thank you. Oh, tell us a bit about Stonehands and what you have launched recently with Hoffa Gallery. So, yeah, um, I am an established artist from uh, France and I do work with different art galleries and museums and uh, I'm I am into the blockchain for more than six years because I am in deep passion with all this new Web3 technology. Um, the main idea of this collection is to open the art to the Web3. And we have a very new idea of uh, rewarding the long-term holders of the, of the collection with physical real art from established artists from different uh, uh, um, um, countries and places in the world. Um, the main idea is to connect the reality and the virtuality through this NFT uh, collection. Thank you. So let's talk about your your launches. Like if someone wants to create or launch an NFT collection, what would you recommend them to do? Maybe Tomo, I think you had the, the uh, recent launch that was very successful yeah. as well as Leo. Can you tell us a bit about your experiences? Like what was the key element of success that you had? I think the key element of success. 
Yeah, yeah, no, not sleeping, not seeing friends and family, yeah, that's the one. But I think a key for us at, at least was the, of course, art, since uh, we have uh, the, the Marvel comics and stuff, it, uh, we, we did find a gap in the whole system, so we kind of, it was much easier to promote it, but still it wasn't easy. And uh, uh, I think Solana community really helped us a lot. It's uh, the, the, the tightness of the community in Solana and uh, how they approached and helped us to actually uh, bring, the, bring this to another level. That's that's what that was the main I think part of the success. And what about um, like the Discord chat? Can you tell us a bit about that? Like, how was that for you? Yeah. The, well, at the beginning, you know the. I think the main point is that whatever, whoever comes into the Discord, it, he needs to be, he needs to feel welcomed, he needs to feel good about himself, and I think that's 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 how we achieved what we achieved, and that's how we have so such a vibrant community that's always active, and uh, plus the collection also has, has a big part of it too, because collection is uh, our collection is built so it's it's built like a trading game, so it's. Uh, uh, our holders are constantly talking to each other and constantly trading the NFTs because we have the mining crews. You always need to kind of switch and back and forth so it fits the tokenomics, the, uh, tokenomics idea. So it's not a collection that you own, but it's more like a tradable. So it's always active and it's always something going on. And uh, I think that's, that's, the, that's what really helped us a lot, you know, to have an active and strong community. Thank you. Um, Leo, uh, tell us about Stonehenge. Um, basically, How was the launch? Uh, yes, yeah. yes, the launch has been very uh, successful, actually. I believe because the concept is kind of new to bring art into the Solana blockchain. And also, if you want to do something in the blockchain, in the NFT world, you need to think Web3. And Web3 is all about uh, making the connection all together we need to be a team on the discord we want to to uh, build that with the holders of the stone uh, they are part of the web3 uh, ongoing movement and the solana community is very helpful for that because it's very friendly it's very open-minded and um, the idea is to invest in your project you have to see the launch as a the first value, but not the only value. You need to invest once again all what you will earn into the project, into the community, into the secondary market value of your collection. And it must be built with your buyers, with your holders. Uh, they are part of this long journey. And if you want to make it, you need to um, um, uh, make them feel with you inside uh, 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 the the movement of the collection. And basically, this is Web3. This is not only a technological aspect of Web3, it's also a concept of society where you invest everybody to the same movement. And that's, that's uh, why I want to put art in the Solana blockchain, because this is all about art, and this is all about Web3. Thanks. I agree, I agree. Uh, definitely, the that um, actually in the Web3, what we have experienced also in the last uh, six to eight months, also on Solana, is that the community aspect is maybe the most important aspect. Like Definitely. in the Web2, you would do a classical marketing, you would do like promotions, maybe pay promotions, things like that. These things don't work in um, Web3. You need to exactly. have this kind of a direct conversation with, with your audience and see what their need, what they ask you to do, and then to follow up with, with what actually is needed by the community. Exactly, exactly. So, oh, Chris, yeah. Yeah. tell us a bit about the future of NFTs in the metaverse. How do you see yeah. it? How was your launch? Where do you see your project going for, forward? Yeah, so uh, just to refer to our la um, latest launch we had in February, we, we were super successful. I, I think we sold out within the first... Uh, 15 minutes, even if it was on congestion problem. And um, yeah, we, we had a really big backing from the community. And I, I think like also in, in general for, for people that are looking in to start an NFT project or, or 
uh, want to be like successful in the market. I, I think something is really important is that you, ha you have a clear vision uh, as well as um, you, you feel you can stand 100% behind uh, your NFTs, but, but also that you are attending different events like this, for example, and, and also EME is something in general I found like really great because when you can talk directly to people and and, and like spread uh, your vision, then you can really build a great solid foundation of a community. And uh, where do you see the, the, the metaverse space going forward? I, I, I mean, I see so many interesting things like going forward and and even now that we, we are really early in the, the VR cycle, I, I've been working with VR uh, even since the first um, HG, uh, first Y bid hit the scene back in 2016. And, and just by these few years I've been in it, the, not only the hardware, but also the technology. But I, I think definitely this is the right track because what, what we get in um, Metaverse compared to, to normal uh, sort of game experience, especially here on, on Web3, is that this social interaction is what we will carry, especially VR, I think. Um, because with some uh, test event we have had so far, we, we had, for example, a, a DJ uh, a, few, a few weeks back. Um, it, we really uh, was managing to gather the community and have like a nice event. And I think event like this, for example, that you have arranged here is the right way to go. And, and it sort of build upon the community. Uh, and especially here in, in, in Solana uh, network where we have very strong other community it's like it's it's like a natural next step to, to like bring people together especially now when we are so uh, we, we are very spread as well uh, it's just amazing to me that we can have this event we have right now for example even that we are in some different parts of the world do you think that uh nfts will play a crew in the future of the metaverses because of this yeah. problem like okay we we all wear oculus headsets yeah. which is a, a meta <laughs> product i mean like the company of Facebook that was renamed to Meta, do you think that they will be the gatekeepers of the future or we're going to have a kind of an open metaverse model and utilizing NFT technology as much as we can? I, I, I think definitely so. I don't think it will be one that have just one solid platform. I think people want to do different experience. They want to belong to different communities. And But something that, that's really talking forward for the VR technology is just that case, for example, that Meta or Facebook did rename themselves and they are pushing a lot for this technology. And, and I just have seen some brief reviews of the new Oculus, for example, which will contain like, for example, leg tracking. So, so, so next year, when, when we are here, maybe we will even um, have like very accurate um, leg settings and, and just how they push the hardware forward is it, just gonna benefit overall, I think. No, no, I can, I can totally agree with with the benefits of, of these companies because without them we would not be here now in in you know like in this crazy environment no. uh, but but, 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 uh, but to get back to your question there like how how huh? you, you just I, I can talk from my perspective like because i have i am talking to a lot of different metaverse projects because because we are we are one of them like uh, for example yaku or portal or other that that are also in this space and i mean uh, I, I think a common thing that we talk about, how can it benefit and how can we, for example, move uh, something that the uh, majority of them have developed right now is just that you are able to move your avatar, for example, between the different. That I see is the clear first step that you can utilize the NFTs in, in other areas and in other metaverse. Yeah, three more. Tom, what, what about Mind of Mars coming to metaverse? Do you think that this is a possibility of the future? Uh, well, yes, I have a little bit different opinion. I think that the, the, the we, what is it, what is we call it Marsverse or Metaverse. This is a good example. Like, uh, I think that uh, what we think of the Metaverse is actually the future of Metaverse will be combination of the real life and Metaverse. They kind of will like intervene with each other and like create like some kind of fabric that, that we all gonna walk with. And I think we, I think that this is this is more like future like this event, you know, like when, when we have both real, reality and metaverse in the same time, but we will see probably more of those, uh, 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 even uh, when it comes to NFT projects. For Mars, we are, uh, we do have lots of ideas, of course, and when it comes to mining and everything, but for us is, as I said, it, 
it to be all about economics and all about game and the gaming system and uh, and uh, trading. That's the that's the, the, the our main goal. And so you think that the storytelling experience is actually something that that can engage people to stay involved in NFT projects. It really doesn't matter yeah. whether it's in a metaverse or a mobile phone or a or a computer. In the NFT space, you believe that the storyline is actually what what makes them excited. Yeah, well, you you kind of follow the what the past, you know, and in the past the story and storytelling has been everything to us, everything from movies, from everything. So I think the storytelling is 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 the future as it was in the past and present. It's always going to be uh, with us, you know, and. Uh, if we can connect all that together, I think that's uh, that's gonna you know make something really interesting and you know bring value to an experience to the to the holder. Cool, um, Leo. Can we talk about the mix of NFTs and art, like how that functions? Because the NFT sector, when it started, it was all about one and one on one art, like single piece of art minted as an NFT. Now we move exactly. from there into these you know, like huge collections, like 7,000 pieces, as Tomos, and you know, like 10,000 pieces. So how how that happened? Uh, actually, it's uh, it's very close. Uh, just to go back to the last question about the metaverse, I, I believe the metaverse will be a good place for art. Actually, I am in discussion with museum uh, in France and so on. They are very interested in exhibiting in the metaverse because sculptures, for example, when you look at the sculptures on the internet, you don't see the size, you don't have the, the feeling of seeing the piece by itself in a real space. And that's the most important in art. It's that when you go to a museum, it's an experience of a space. And you will be able to do that in the metaverse. And a lot of museums and art places will have their exact uh, same place in the metaverse and I actually I, I will work on that as well uh, through my own collection and through my, my work of art as well uh, to go back to your question um, when I work as an artist as an NFT artist I work mostly on one one exclusive piece that I link to my physical to some of my physical pieces it's like digital between physical and digital piece at the same time you can have the NFT and you can also receive the real sculpture, the real marble one one sculptures at the same time. It makes a link in between the reality and the virtuality, digital piece. Um, in this collection, it's a bit different, but it's the same idea. The more you hold, the more physical reward you can get over time. If you are a strong N and you keep it for years, you will receive uh, months after months physical art and if you are a big time holder of many, many pieces, you can receive like sculptures and fine art prints and, and things like that. We want to uh, make a connection in between the virtual value and the real value of art. It's a little bit like doing stacking, but stacking of real digital art going on to physical art rewards. <laughs> more uh, uh, virtual uh, things that they own or real uh, things that they own, maybe in, in about five to 10 years time. W will my watch that exists in real life be more valuable for me than my virtual watch that exists on my avatar that I don't I have right now, by the way? <laughs> I believe that year after year, the virtuality will become much more valuable um, because the young generation, they prefer to own virtual assets than real assets. So slowly but surely, the digital art will become more and more valuable. But it's also connected. Um, I don't believe reality will disappear. You will still need to have real uh, connection with art. But I believe that digital art will be a very important market in the next few, like four or five years. It will become as big as the art market right now. Um, because it's very interesting. You can create so many things uh, as an artist. You can imagine uh, uh, like an NFT that will evolve over time or can maybe uh, change in two or three years. If you go to this exhibition, the NFT will, will change to something new. It's, it's more like a quest. You have to see digital art as a quest 
and not only as an object, as a physical object. And I want to make the bridge in between the physical object, and the digital idea of art. Thanks. Uh, ah, Chris is down. No, no, I'm here. I'm Chris, here. are you OK? <laughs> uh, are you there? Hi, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, OK. So I have a question for you. Uh, oh. Sorry, I didn't lock my position in space. So I moved. Yeah, I lock it now. OK. So um, as Leo was mentioning something about value of, of uh, art in, in the future and our uh, position in the, in the metaverse where we will spend time there, I'm interested to learn from you, like, what do you think? Like, will people spend more time in the metaverse in the future or in real life? Like, what is your view on the, on the situation that we are stealing people from real life experiences and moving them to these virtual experiences? Is this good? Uh, I, I think, like, in, to some extent, it already has been proven that it is uh, um, a fundamental. Uh, pro like, I mean, ju just to go back in history, like, uh, take example, like Second Life or World of Warcraft that did peak almost at 20 million people. I, I think that to some extent it, it proved that that people won't have an easy, reliable set where they can do experience. And I mean, uh, it, 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 it's sort of really awesome because I, I mean, I, I, I think that especially during the pandem pandemic we did come out really did prove that people value digital assets um, in a whole way, other way, and, and something that is with digital, at least, is that uh, it, it doesn't have any boundary who is interested uh, in, in that piece or in that collection. So I, I think uh, I, you can already see it proven that a digital asset is valuable, especially like just by taking a look at the NFT market, because uh, the values come from from the the, the person that value it, you know, and and. If they get half, uh, like joy and happiness, and, and also an experience out of it, I mean, it's up to the person to decide. But yeah, I definitely believe that digital asset can be valuable. And and how are we gonna choose in what metaverse we're gonna spend our time in? Like, are we gonna go to Lux or are we gonna go to uh, Facebook Meta's metaverse or I don't know some some other metaverse that exists? Uh, Yuga Labs metaverse. Like where are we going to spend our time? How? I, I, I think it comes down to, I, I think, for example, we, we have a lot of things that difference from, from other metaverse. And, and, and for example, uh, uh, your platform, for example, you have, have a niche in art, which I think is really great. And I, I think like it doesn't necessarily need to be that it's one platform. I, I think people will go between different platforms and also utilize the NFTs they have, and 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 all this type of collaboration we can do as um, uh, like projects owner of of a metaverse is that trying to combine it, and I think we will see more and more example of this how we can bring not only assets, your avatar, and different thing between, and and I think it will be a niche for for because I don't think it will be one that that rule the all. I think everyone will have this sort of niches, and and people want to have different experience and meet different people, so. I think more that we go into the future, it will be more and more seamless to go between the different, uh, because I see it as experience, you know? So you, you, you say that we'll be having virtual identities basically, and then with our virtual identities that we own as the NFTs, we will jump from one metaverse to another metaverse, having different types of experiences. I, I, I truly believe so, and and something that uh, that three have really opened up, and and just the blockchain, and that you can actually, instead of being a closed network like, for example, Steam or or Blizzard, where where all your assets ba basically you have collected is locked there, by collaborating with with other metaverse projects, and by providing them um, the ha the hash list of the NFT collection, they can actually. Uh, you can create together different things that can be valued from the asset you own. So. That's what makes it really exciting. And uh, I think it will be a lot of different metaverse with different sort of niches and, and specialties that people want to experience. Yeah, thanks. Tomo, now the question that we raised about virtual identities. Um, your collection has a very specific art pieces that
Is everything okay? <laughs> okay, so um, can you tell us a bit about this transformation of identity? Are your coll collectors basically taking your art and placing them as PFPs and being proud of being a miner from Mars? Is it something that you want to kind of develop further in the future? Uh, yeah, we actually, since our collection is uh, hand-drawn on paper, uh, we also have uh, in our roadmap that we're going to do a vector version of every all, all the traits and then uh, regenerate the whole collection and then launch it on Ethereum. So it's also connected to the story, so the actual PFP part of our collection will be sitting on Ethereum blockchain because we have uh, those are minor clones that, uh, that are found from the uh, our current Solana collection is, are the actual cards that are lost. So, a bit complicated story, but it's really simple. You know, the the cards were found, the the, the Earth is destroyed, the the Mars Martian miners are only ones that, that are left. So we these alien species, these semi gods, found these cards and they created the clones in incubators and they. They're, they're going to be sitting on the on the as a PFP version on the Ethereum blockchain. But uh, from that point, yeah, we have the we have lots of plans for the PFPs in in future, and with the, with the woman of Mars coming too. So we also have we're going to have a clones of women. They're going to not going to live on Mars. They're going to live on some different planet planet. So that's why they're on Ethereum. So. Yeah, we we have the we have the big big plans for the actual PFPs. Yeah. Cool. So Leo, um, that's a, an interesting thing that that uh, Thomas said just now is like Solana Ethereum. So we have a Solana blockchain. It has its its kind of um, big big things like the speed, like the the cost of transactions, which is really low. So it, it makes an uh, entrance for the new users much easier. But can you tell us also, do you have a, a view about what the difference between launching a collection on Ethereum and launching a collection on Solana? Because the Ethereum is more like considered, I think, in the art space as the more, more premium chain. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, um, actually, I choose Solana because I, I believe in the Solana for long. I do, I, I, I do follow the Solana blockchain for more than a year and a half, and I do old Solana for, for, for years. Uh, I believe in this blockchain because of the proof um, it uses, actually, and without the gas fee, because I believe art must not be, uh, at the beginning, I guess, must, must not be something too expensive. And that's, that's my first criticize on the Ethereum blockchain, is that because of the gas fee, if you want to do an Ethereum uh, collections, you you need to have a starting price very high, and and that's that wasn't the goal for this collection. The goal was to to give access to art, you need to spread the cultures. You know, uh, Web three, it's it's a market, but it's also a concept of of society. Um, you want to share value of knowledge and art, and that's that's the that's the basement of the Web three. So. I wanted to do it on Solana to have an accessible floor price at the beginning and then make value over time by rewards and running NFT to get physical PCs. That's in the roadmap as well. We will, we will make scarcity over time. The system of burns that will uh, reward physical PCs if you burn some of these Stonehead's NFTs. Um, but then, yes, we want to expand. Um, we have an idea of... Uh, a short collection of stoneheads on the Ethereum blockchain, maybe another one on Solana in October. Um, we have a huge growing community around, museum is coming to the place as well. Um, very strong holders because actually, uh, because there are some, uh, some, some high value artists in this uh, collection, um, there is some, uh, some, some very strong holders of 1.1 NFT a lot of stone at the same time and want to make uh, these strong holders very important as real partners of this uh, of this long-term journey so yeah that's the that's the idea is to expand but not too quickly we want to build value we want to make a good partnership with the discord and the 
and the, all the holders of the stone heads, and then we will move forward slowly but surely. But I believe this art market in the, in the Web3 and Metaverse will be very, very strong over time. Do you think that the, the art market in the Metaverse will be bigger than the art, traditional art market? I, 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 I believe it's connected. Um, it, it won't take six months. We are here for the long term. No, we, we have seen too many projects with a short roadmap without any long-term vision. And that's the main things we have to build in the Web3 now, long-term ideas. Uh, taking a 10K collection, it's not something about uh, short term. You need to believe in your idea of building something strong in the long term. And when you work as an artist, you know what it means to do long term things. Because when I start a marble sculptures uh, in my art studio, it takes a few months to achieve. And then I have to go in an art galleries and wait for the exhibition and, and sell it and bring it to the museum and everything. Uh, I do have this both aspect in my art. I know the value of time. And um, if you want to be part of a long-term journey, you also have, as an older, to be a bit patient, look at the roadmap, go step by step. Um, it's going to be huge, the Web3, Metaverse, everything. But most of the people want to have short-term results. And um, like, can we have something tomorrow? Can we have yes, yes, tomorrow? exactly. And short-term results, most of the time. Uh, doesn't happen this way, or goes, it falls down very quickly afterward. If you want to build long-term value, you need to take it step by step. Slowly. That's exactly what we do as a art uh, collection. Thanks. Uh, Chris, yeah. we just touched the topic, and I think this is an important topic. Like, what about multi-chain world? Yeah. How the metaverse will fit inside of this multi-chain world? Is it going to be a metaverse for Ethereum, a metaverse for Solana, a metaverse for Luna, Terra? No, not <laughs> anymore. Not the public, no, I mean, audience, do you know yeah, that Terra horrible. is finished? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, like, are we going to have like these different types of, of, of metaverses for each blockchain? Or is it going to be one metaverse for all the chains? every metaverse for all the chains yeah so so uh, as for now and and um, exactly like leo I, I i've been a holder and a fan long time um of solana and just because of these reasons of, of the, the proof of history but but also the the transactions fee and so forth and w when i started out my project i, I saw that the, the only valuable uh option because of uh, in in the end like how how our vision is established is that we really want to be able to uh, have transactions and and also be able to exchange value and have an economy inside what we are building so then solana was the clear answer to that but on the other hand i i see it as healthy for a product also as well to able to to spread and reach out to more people because something i, I think because the, the latest month the, the solana have been facing some issue with congestion and, and also i i don't think it because when we started out it was more clear that probably a lot of people will will join over time but it's sort of stagnated and i think uh, as, as a project and and to to like see the growth of it and also reaching out to new audience i i think you can actually have a platform here you have different areas as well as you you have a different audience from different blockchain where you can have some beneficial like for example this uh, avatar collection we are working really hard on right now as we look out right now i think that will be on the ethereum chain just and but we will still have the fundamental uh, economy and and the engine will be built on solana as, as well as the nfts we have right now cool yeah, I got to uh, push in the shoulder here yeah. only. <laughs> so, um, if we talk about NFTs of the future, uh, Tomo, do you think the current NFT technology that kind of we utilize every day today is enough to bring the value for your future drops or your future uh, mechanics that you want to implement into your systems? Do we need more tech? Do we need more tools? To be able to deliver to the audience everything that they actually need. 
Uh, yeah, I believe um, it's also like there's a psychological factor here. There's uh, we we need to like uh, like go a little bit back in the past and see how the NFTs became so popular, and we can connect them definitely as a, as a Chris said to pandemic, and uh, we're all locked down, we're all scared, some of them less more, and we needed to escape, and uh, I think the the explosion of NFT communities happened just in time when people needed it, and uh, it's like uh, it's almost like we group group into these positive groups. Well, it used to be a church or something, but it, it, it could be said that NFT community is like a modern web free church because we, we all come and we all speak positive and we're looking for the escape from whatever is going around us, all the bad stuff there is. That's why all the NFT communities keep pushing the positive, 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 because it is a certain type of escape. And uh, more people, more people, you know, going need this escape. The more technology will be following that. So it's all about demand. You know, the, the more people get into it, the more technology and money will be poured into it, and then faster we'll go. And that's what we said. We, we've seen with the pandemic, kind of pushing a little bit everything faster than it. Then that's where we are right now. We are actually one step forward, and that's why everything in NFT is so. So faster than in real life, you know, because we we did that to ourselves, you know. No, I can I can uh, totally correlate with you to, on this because no sleep is is a real kind of issue I think currently in the NFT space because we spend too much time and and I must say to the audience also like that the you know, family is suffering and we need to find this balance between you know, like working with the latest and and most interesting technologies and moving this, this bar forward and, and advancing the technology and leading a normal life. I think this is also important because of our friends and families and like they suffer and you don't know this because I mean, we'd be talking about it, right? And yeah. uh, um, I think that, that this balance is also very important to have. Oh, did Toma disappear for you too? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> May, maybe Toma. Could, 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 yeah. could I add just one oh. thing there on, on what, what Tom said? Uh, sorry, but but also that something that we can see, that, like this horrible example that happened to, to Luna right now, is that I think it's also valuable for the project as well to to have some um, a larger audience and and also have some because um, I I wonder how the NFTs projects feel there today. So, um, Leo, uh, we have a couple of more minutes before we do a kind of a closing words. I would like to ask you, like, do you think that we should, I mean, anybody that is looking now to launch an NFT collection should focus on these, like, you know, a couple of hundreds of, a couple of, of thousands of pieces, hundreds of pieces, for example, or should focus on the one-on-one -on -one art? Like, what do you think is, is the best time versus value that could be now like captured from the nft uh, uh communities this is this is two different market completely different market if you go for the one one value of your nft must be the creation it means you must have this kind of artist value that you put in because the one one nft isn't going to build a community it is, it's an art value by itself, like a unique piece, very rare. So you need to focus on, on your art aspect and show to the world that you are an artist if you want to go into this one, one NFT. If you want to launch a collection, the main value is not the visual or the, or the art. The main value is the project, the main project you're going to build over time. It's, it's a completely different market and it doesn't touch the same uh, holders, uh, it can be connected, but not not all the time. I would like to go back to this very interesting question about uh, evolution of NFT. Uh, I believe the next step for the NFT will be much more based on the code and the smart contract. We need evolutive NFT uh, uh, things that will change over time and give more and more possibilities, because uh, like. This is amazing to be able to make a code 
specific smart contract and code. And I believe the art project, the one one and the collection must think about uh, the code. What's new will you add into your project? And that's, that's the deep idea of what is the Web3 and also what is owning an NFT. Um, you must feel that you own something valuable. If it's only the visual and you just throw it this way, on, like nowhere on the blockchain, it's not going to last long. You need to build something new and to make this feeling of value, valuation. Uh, and, and I will uh, do it short, but uh, when you buy something in real life, a car, uh, clothing, anything, it used over time, it's going to fade away. It, it, it was good 30 years ago, 40 years ago, the golden age of the industrial era. But now we are going into the golden age of the digital era. And, and I believe the value of a good smart contract over time, good NFT, is much more interesting than real material things because it's going to last longer. And that's, that's the main idea of an NFT, to look at the long-term value of it, not the short-term value. And you think that we will be able to identify with our bodies that, and then our virtual avatars? I believe uh, the more the metaverse will grow, the more the NFT value, the global market of the NFT value will grow because you will have much more utilities and uses in real situation of the metaverse. Um, right now, the main market of the NFT is the art market because it's the only market that has this kind of uh, 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 real visible value of, of being an art piece. Because the metaverse is it's something new with very few people using NFT into the metaverse. But the more and more the metaverse will grow, the more the, ma the, the global market of the NFT and the usage, the uses of this NFT will grow as well. Thank you. So, Chris, let me check the time. Uh, we have like a, a minute left. Can you uh, give us your closing thoughts on the topic of merger of NFTs and the metaverse? Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, absolutely, and um, and uh, I agree also with Leo as well. Like it's it's rather interesting just how the new opportunities opening up with with the metaverse and and also as well with with digital assets. Um, uh, it will look as good in third year as it does right now, and and also it opens up so much opportunity like that we can from here evolve from this um, only this PNG file that. It, we can build different utilities, not only how you use it, but, but also how it can evolve uh, over time. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking very bright on the future and, and I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of it right now. Thank you. Leo, tell us something nice about the future. <laughs> Thank you. So once again, I, I would like to thank you and thanks to everybody here to, to, to make the blockchain and the metaverse alive. It's because of the viewers uh, and all the interested people will build it over time. Uh, but I would like to say it's that Web3, the concept of altruism, we need to think all together. Um, it's not only doing business in the metaverse or digital assets. It's also a concept of society. We are at the edge of something new, the old world world is fading, uh, 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 is falling down, is fading away. We need to, to build this trust. We need to build this, this long-term vision. And I believe the metaverse, the digital art, the NFT can be an answer to many, many uh, 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 challenge of the society now. Thank you, Leo. I'm going to now shake your hands, virtual hands. Yes, hello, hello, nice. I will go here, I know there's the edge of the stage. I'll just touch. <laughs> thank you so hey. much, Victor. and great to range. Then thank you everybody for listening Thanks, Chris. and tuning in. Thanks for everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Bye, bye guys. Bye-bye. Bye guys. See you thank soon you. again in, in virtual reality. Thank you, bye-bye. Ah, sure.
Konačno čujem svoj glas normalno. Znači, ovaj delay od pet sekundi je toliko strašan da ovaj... Šta? English, yes, sorry. Yes. Thank you everyone for being here, listening to the panel. This delay of five seconds or a couple of seconds is, is very annoying when you're leading the panel because I, I tell something and then I hear myself back. So I hope you enjoyed the panel. Um, maybe there are some, some questions from the audience right now. Maybe, I don't know, we are off the, off the time, but I saw that the, the last panel had some questions. So maybe we can take some questions now. No questions. Okay, uh -huh. there is a question. Aha, okej, okej. Aha, ne, evo, dolazi mikro. Sorry, I'm a bit annoying with the questions. Yeah, I was wondering, because there is this, for me as someone who was artist for 20 years, there is a kind of prisoner paradigm here in the NFT world. So, Leo was speaking about the value coming through the years, and this, for me, doesn't differentiate from the value that in 19th century artists had after he is becoming dead eventually. So uh, I was just wondering for like, let's say fine arts or let's say classically um, seen arts, how can NFT actually be really uh, profitable? Because the gas fees are as we already talked about that, uh, becoming really impossible on Ethereum. So I was just Switch wondering... Switch to Solana. <laughs> no, yeah. really. Yeah, but I, I need, a little, if you can go a little bit deeper. So for fine arts and classical arts, is there tomorrow that is a little bit closer than tomorrow after the death? No, I think that um, for traditional art, or just a way of thinking that the traditional art has, I think that uh, the value is actually created in your communities. And when I say communities in traditional art, that means collectors, right? So you need to, in the old world, like the gallerist was the one that was creating a value out of artists. He was the one that is kind of promoting the artist, he knew the collectors, he was creating a story around the artist and its work. Today, it's a kind of an interesting, you know, switch, because now the artist is creating his own stories. He's the one that is, or she's the one that is going around the world in these, you know, like uh, Discord chats or Twitters, creating his own presence in the digital arena. So I think it's, a, it, but I'm, I'm not saying that there is no place for a gallerist or someone who will be an agent for, you know, like an artist. Maybe he's not very socially, you know, skilled. He, he doesn't know how to take conversations into the digital arena. He doesn't want to. He just wants to sit, sit at home and, and, you know, in his atelier and, and uh, create, you know, paint uh, or, or 3D model or, or do whatever. So sometimes these people will come in, the, the experts in the, in the digital communication and take the role of promoting the artist. While some of the, some of the artists uh, will be able to create their own communities and be their own agents, let's say. So I think that the value capture is inside of, of, of communities that are following the artist. So as you can sustain this, this the attention of the communities or of the collectors, you will then create this kind of a, a, um, a long-term value uh, for them. And uh, this, this idea that, you know, that the value capture today will be bigger in the future for these collectors because your career will develop, you will develop, and you will grow your audience more and more over the years. It's a very diff difficult thing. It's not an easy thing. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we are five minutes off the time. Thank you again uh, very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we are going to have two more talks. I'm here and on the floor with you. So we're going to, sorry. I just wanted to.
Minuten. Thank you.